the Lord, everybody. Welcome back to Bible study. God bless you. It's an honor to be in the house of God tonight. If you haven't done so already, please, please, if you would, go ahead and share this broadcast with your network. God bless you to all of you children of God that are on here tonight with us. We truly, truly bless God for you uh, being in the house with us tonight. Come on, go ahead and share this broadcast, if you will. Uh, be greatly appreciated if you would do so. Uh, tonight is going to be a great night in the Lord, so please go ahead and share this broadcast with your family. I understand that tonight is a very, very important night in the nation, but there is nothing more important than the Word of God. Come on, if you agree with me on that, somebody shout amen after you hit the share button. <laughs> go ahead and shout amen with me if you believe that there's nothing more important than the Word of God. Come on, everything else can wait. Mr. Biden, Mr. Trump, uh, Mr. West, and all the rest of them they can wait let's get this word of God because you need this word tonight I have grace to win and we're going to talk about it tonight so please go ahead and share this broadcast with your network of people I'm gonna go through my roll call here in just a moment let's get our numbers up tonight if we can please let's go ahead and get our numbers up tonight amen help a brother out help a pastor out help a friend out help a, a nephew out help a grandson out uh whatever you got to do help me out tonight and uh let's go ahead and and get uh the people in the house tonight for bible study it's going to be a great 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 night in the lord so please go ahead and share this with your network of people it'll be greatly appreciated while you're doing that we're going to go ahead and go before the lord in prayer so please uh join me and just let's make this space available for God tonight. Let's make this space honorable unto him. Uh, Father, we give you glory. We give you honor for what you're doing in the house and what you're doing around us, what you're doing in this land, what you're doing in your people. And Father, we glorify your name for there is none like you, none other, God, that we can find. We can search the earth and still will never find one like you, nor, nor similar, nor uh, like you at all in any of your ways. God, you are miraculous. You're powerful. You're uh, uh, everywhere. You're all-knowing, oh God. And so we give you the glory, God, that you deserve, that you honor, uh, that we honor you with, God, in the mighty name of Jesus, in our mind and even in our strength, Father. We ask, God, that you calm our, our uh, molecular system right now, God. Calm us, God even if, I, if we have nerves or fears with what's going on around us, calm those issues, calm those areas, uh, uh, bring us into a stillness, God, only that you can, Father, bring us into a place where we are able to understand your word, bring us into a place, God, where we're under, able to understand your voice and hear your voice, for you say, God, that your sheep know your voice and they will listen to you and a stranger they will not hear, Father, let us know the voice of our Lord and our Father and our Savior, even in this moment, God, where many voices are speaking many things are being said to us but God let us understand our voice and our refuge who you are and so God we give you the glory we give you the honor we give you the praise for what it is that you're doing and what you're about to do in our lives God we thank you for grace mercy favor love and ever so much more God that you have bestowed upon us in the mighty name of Jesus let all your people be blessed tonight in Jesus name we pray Amen. 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 God bless you, people of God, men and women of God that are on here tonight. I celebrate with you. God bless you in the house of God. God bless you in the house of God. Let me make a couple adjustments real quick just so I can make myself uh, very comfortable. Um, we're here again because the word was preached on Sunday. And I want to go ahead and throw this up on you uh, about the word that we preached on Sunday. It was called, I have grace to win. Can we talk about that tonight? So while you guys are joining in here, amen, let's get our shares up. If you uh, haven't shared this yet, go ahead and drop over there and hit that share button for me. Amen. Man, let's not be afraid of that share button. It's a very powerful tool. This is how we are being fruitful and multiplying on our live stream church. So go ahead and get in here and hit that live, uh, excuse me, hit that share button. God bless you to all that are still coming in. Don't come in for just a peek, but stay for a while. I promise you this word is going to bless you. Amen. 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 God bless you all. Let's do some shout outs in the house tonight. So I see our dear sister, Sister Jen. God bless you, woman of God. Thank you for joining again. Mother uh, Robinson, I see you on here. My sister April, God bless you, woman of God. Mother Neil is on here. God bless you. Sister Amy, she's on. Sister Katanya, a.k.a. Peaches, a.k.a. Mary J. Cole. Y'all got to know it for yourself. Amen. Come to church and I'll tell you what it's about. <laughs> God bless you, uh, family. I love you so much. Thank you for being on here. Uh, shout out to Pastor Sierra, who's 
taking the night off tonight. Um, she's not on, uh, but God bless you, my beautiful wife. I love you so much, so dearly. Always holding down the fort, always helping me out, always pushing me forward, uh, just as a wonderful wife and, and just a wonderful pastor, a wonderful woman in the Lord. God bless you uh, so much. I love you so, so, so much. So uh, if you're getting in here, go ahead and let me know that you're in here. I see there's a few people in here and that there's not enough names to the numbers I'm seeing. So I need to know who's in here with me, who's on here for a word of God. There's there's a lot going on tonight, but there's a word that you need. Somebody say there's a word from God tonight. Come on, if you could put that in the comment section. Let me uh, invite you to the comment section. This is where we congregate on our Bible studies. This is where we come in and we make fellowship with the people of God. And I need you to I need you to let somebody know that's that's sliding in this live. Tell them there is a word from God tonight. Come on. Amen. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. Amen. Amen. There's a word from God tonight. There's a word from God tonight. Amen. So I don't want to uh, prolong the time. You guys are here. God bless who, who all is here. Shout out to Altar Worship Center. Uh, our family is always, God bless you all, uh, always supportive and always holding us down. God bless you, AWC fam. Uh, truly love you guys and truly appreciate you guys for all you do to help us build this magnificent church. Amen. 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 Let's get into the word of God. So you see it on the screen right now. It says, I have grace to win. I says, I have grace to win. Can you guys, let's get interactive tonight. Y'all know how I do. You're going to have to type. You're going to have to respond. You got to do something because I can't hear you. I can't see you. So you got to help me out and let me know that you're in here. So come on, somebody put the name of the message in your comment and let's claim it together. Make that proclamation yourself. It says it right on your screen in beautiful white letters. It says, I have grace to win. Can you write that in the comment section as well? Come on, come on, come on, write that. God bless you, Sister Jen. Thank you for so much for your prayers and your uh, your love toward us. God bless you, Sister. I love you so much. Thank you so much for that. Um, I have grace to win. Can you say it for yourself? Not just because it's the sermon title, not because that's the thing we're talking about tonight, but say it for yourself. I have grace to win. Let's talk about this tonight. Amen. Let's talk about this tonight. Let's talk about this tonight. I have grace to win. I'm going to make this one last adjustment. Amen. That's much better. Amen. Amen. That's much better. Much better. All right. So let's talk about this tonight. I have grace to win. Let me go over here to this camera. Yeah. Now I'm in the word. I'm in, I'm in my area now. All right. I have grace to win. Amen. Make that declaration yourself. Make that declaration yourself. I understand. Uh, let's get into this word tonight that there have been some things that have troubled us. There have been some things that have annoyed us. There have been some things that have gotten on our everlasting nerve, but I want to make this declaration today. I want to announce it to the world before you find out who's the next person in office for the next four years. Let me say this to you. I have grace to win. Come on, I know that there's been some things that's happened this year that have not been favorable to your life and to your lifestyle, to your income, to your job, to your education, to your family, to your children, and everything and above to the church. I know there's been some unfortunate things, but baby, let me tell you something tonight. I have grace to win. You got to say it within yourself. Come on, don't just type it, but say it. I know you might be at Walmart right now. You might be riding down the road, but talk to yourself. Let your spirit man know that I have grace to win. We are in a fight for our life. That is the series that we're in. God bless you, everybody that's making that proclamation tonight. I have grace to win. You were right about it. Let me tell you something, man. The word was so powerful on Sunday that there was some things said over us that was very powerful, life changing. We're expecting God right now. We're living in a time of expectation. The heavens are still open unto us. I'm telling you right now that there's some expectating uh, uh, expectations that's going on out of the heaven realms that's coming into the earth realm and the people of God are tapping in. I'm telling you, I have grace to win because the Lord God has blessed me with a day. Come on. I, I need some testimonies tonight before we get into this. I have been graced because he woke me up this morning. Where, where are the saints at? He started me on my way. Come on. Where the old school at real quick? Uh, uh, put food on my table, clothes on my back. Come on, I got grace to win. He's already provided for me, amen, in the mighty name of Jesus. I have everything that I need to win forever. I have grace. Somebody say it with me, amen. Let's get into this word tonight. Let's just kind of break some things down, and we're going to be out of here in the time that God allows us to be out of here. But in the, in the meantime, we're going to preach this word tonight, amen. So 
Come on, Altar Worship Center family, light up the comment section. Get some more people in here because this word is going to be powerful. Everybody else being nosy to other stuff, they need to get in here and get this word. Amen. But grace, somebody say grace. You don't have to type it in. Just say it. Talk back with me. I don't know. I, I know I can't hear you, but go ahead and be interactive with me. Let's make it like we're at the church tonight. Grace is God's gift to us. Grace is God's gift to us. Grace is not just that thing you say at the dinner table when you are uh, uh, getting ready to eat your great food. Grace is not just that. Grace is what we have as a gift from God. And I'm so glad about it because it is a gift that we don't deserve. Somebody say amen. It's a gift that we uh, haven't had to work for, but it's a gift that he gives us freely because of his love for us. Grace is often described as unmerited favor. It, it, it means that it's something that is not deserving or earned. That means we didn't have to do anything to receive grace. We just had to be here and God was able to give us something that we didn't necessarily earn, nor did we work for. And it's a it's a beautiful thing to understand grace in this way, because oftentimes the Bible tells us, even in the New Testament, that Paul was teaching the people, don't continue to sin that grace may abound. Don't take advantage of grace because grace is there. Don't put yourself in a bind because grace is there. Don't enter into some situation because grace is there, because grace may not be there in your ignorance. Grace may not be there in your decision making of things that may not be uh, good for you, but grace is there for those who are uh, God's children when they're in a bind uh, some something that they may have gotten into uh, uh, subconsciously not knowing that they were getting in there God gives us grace for those things because he has a purpose for our life but when we willingly willingly put ourselves in situations against God's uh, word and against God's favor over our life and against God's uh, uh, instruction over our life there then we may not have grace for that time because that was something that we did that was not necessary and there's been some unnecessary things that we have done and God has graced us for. But those things we may not we may have done outside of the word of God that we didn't have in us. But now for you, AWC folk, now for you, Christian uh, lifestyle folks, for you, biblical folks that you have known better. The word it tells us that now that we have received these things, we are accountable for it. So now there's grace on our life. Yes, for things uh, uh, for certain for things, but there's grace on our life that we cannot take advantage. Of. So I'm not going to return back to a lifestyle just because I want to get one last hurrah. No, that's not worth it, baby, because I might not have grace for that last hurrah. Come on, somebody say amen. I, I, I can testify that I've tried to do some things uh, that I let go of. And when I did it, it was worse this time than it was when I was doing it in my ignorance. So come on. I know I'm not the only one that have tried to go back and redo some things that you thought, well, maybe I'll get one last go at it. It's worse now than it was ever before. That weight has inquired seven more demons stronger. So when you pick that thing up, you're in for a fight for your life. Come on. Somebody say, I need grace. I need grace. I need grace. And, and, and somebody's on here going to understand tonight that uh, uh, there's some things that we need to understand that we have received from God that we didn't earn at all. He just gives it because we are his people. Uh, Sister Jen says, I had a business uh, trademark meeting um, on Sunday morning. And oh, okay. God, okay. That's, that's fine. Woman of God. Thank you. Thank you for that. Thank you for that. That's, that's perfectly fine. That's perfectly fine. Amen. Um, so we'll get together. Absolutely. We'll get together. So listen, uh, we when we think of uh, this this grace, we under we can understand more about salvation and why salvation was given to us by uh, Christ. God bless you, Pastor Sierra. Thank you, Amen, for getting in here. I need grace. I wish y'all were following the woman of God and saying that we all need it. I need grace. I would have made it through this day. I would have made it through these last four years and the four years prior to that and the four years that's coming. I won't make it without this grace. Come on, I need this grace to win because Lord knows we are in a race. Lord knows we're in a fight. Lord knows we're in a, a, a lot of things and we need this grace. My God. And grace comes with some friends. It comes with mercy. <laughs> it comes with favor. It comes with love. It comes with blessings. You know, one of the things I talked about on Sunday is that people often misinterpretate uh, your life because they don't understand the blessings that's coming through from your grace. Come on, somebody. Let's talk about it. We have uh, people that are jealous at us. People are jealous of me 
People are jealous of you because they have mishandled your grace. And the only thing they're responding to is the fact that you're blessed. They see the blessings. They don't understand the grace. I, I, I know you understand that I'm getting things. I'm getting somewhere. I'm acquiring things. I'm going higher. But you don't understand the grace on my life for me to obtain these things. Come on, somebody talk back to me tonight. They have mishandled uh, 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 the blessings because they don't understand the grace. They have mishandled my, my, my anointing because they don't understand the grace. They have mis un they misunderstood my lifestyle and my stance, my covenant with God because they don't understand my grace. I need somebody to, uh, oh my God, tonight y'all gonna get me stirred up. Come on, I need this grace because people are messing around to this, this time in our lives. People are doing things to people that don't deserve things to be brought forth to them. And they're not even going after the right systems. They're just messing up stuff. They're just doing stuff. They're just saying stuff. But tell me somebody tonight that I need this grace. Amen. I need this grace that God has given out freely to people. And I want to tell y'all, let me testify to you based on my conditions and the actions that I have in my history. I don't even deserve grace. Am I the only one that can say I have received grace that I did not deserve? Because anybody else um, partner with me and just let me know and testify tonight. Have you been graced with things that you did not deserve? Come on, talk in, talk in this chat with me tonight. Amen. Now, Mother Neil, don't get me started. She said, nobody can do you like Jesus. That's my song right there, Mother Neil. Can't nobody do me like Jesus. I, I, I'm telling you, Jesus has done me so well in my life. And I look and say, man, I don't know why he took the time to bless me this way. I don't know why he took the time to, to put me in this situation. I don't even know why he took the time. But you know what? He wants me to win. God wants you to win, people of God. He wants you to uh, win so bad that he's giving you something that you did not deserve. Come on, somebody get in here tonight and let's talk about this. I have grace to win. I'm waiting for these testimonies to come through. Okay, Pastor Sierra, I see you with a testimony. I'm coming for you. Amen. Sister Katani, she said, I need this grace. I need this grace. I need this grace for my kids. I need this grace for my unborn kids. Me and my wife don't have kids yet. I need grace for them. Amen. I need this grace for my nieces and my nephews. I need this grace for on my job. I know I'm not the only one. Can y'all testify in this house tonight? She says, yes. How do we comfortably walk in grace and handle the jealousy? Well, woman of God, let me pin that real quick because we're going to talk about that. We are going to talk about that. That's pretty good. I love that question. Amen. I hope y'all can see that. Amen. Great question, Pastor Sierra. So let's talk about, amen, let's talk about that. Great, 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 great question, Pastor Sierra. I love it. I'm going to start cheering y'all. When y'all put something good in the chat message, I'm going to cheer you on. Amen. <laughs> amen. So one more time, great question, Pastor Sierra. So listen, she says, yes, how do we walk comfortably? How do we comfortably walk in grace and handle the jealousy. Well, let me tell you something about, about grace. Um, grace makes you a person of peace. When you fully understand grace, you, you don't necessarily deal with jealousy head on. Jealousy is being dealt with by your favor. Mm. Jealousy is being dealt with by your grace and your uh, mercy by, of God. And then also on top of that, jealousy can't stand because it's being met at the gates of of blessings. Every time jealousy comes into our life, it has to come through a threshold. It needs something to react to. And so I just keep on walking in my blessings because my blessings keep making jealousy erupt. Eventually it's going to get to the point where jealousy is going to implode on itself because it's chasing after something that I have that it doesn't understand. And so I walk comfortably in the blessings of God. And let me give you this scripture. Uh, I'm going to say it to you. I'm going to find it real quickly. But uh, it says that the blessings of the Lord makes rich and it adds no sorrow. Ooh, ooh, we come on, Pastor Corey, preach tonight. I know I'm preaching to myself. If I ain't preaching to nobody on here, I'm preaching to me. Amen. Who am I preaching to? The blessings of the Lord makes rich, but it adds no sorrow. So we 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 understand that there's no point of me walking any other way, um, uh, any other way, because I know that I am going to be blessed. And I know there's no reason for me to hang my, uh, ring my, hang my head. Proverbs 10 and 22. Somebody put that in the chat for me real quick. Uh, Proverbs 10 and 22. It says the blessings of the, the blessing of the Lord, it maketh rich and he addeth no sorrow to it. Amen. I, I gave it to you in a little bit more of a paraphrased way. So it was easier to hear, 
but the blessings of the Lord makes rich and it adds no sorrow. So while I'm being blessed through grace, through faith, through love, through mercy, I'm not going to hang my head because people are upset about my life. I'm not going to hang my head because people are upset uh, uh, about my uh, promotions and about where I'm going. I'm not going to hang my head. If I were you, I would join in because if he's doing it for your neighbor, he must be in the neighborhood. Come on, altar worship Sunday. I don't act like you ain't heard that before. He in my neighborhood. So how I walk comfortably, I keep walking comfortably because he's going to keep working it out for me. Romans 8, 28 says, and we know that all things work according to a uh, uh, work to, for the good of those are ca called according to his purpose. So I'm going to keep on walking because it's working out for me. I'm going to keep on walking because there's no need for me to be sad while he's making me blessed. It, 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 it makes him making me rich, making me fat. Amen. Not physically fat, but I'm being blessed in wealth. I'm not going to hang my head for nobody because you're uncomfortable with the fact that grace has got me here. No, 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 no. I'm going to stay in this. I'm not going to stoop down to nobody's level because they don't understand the grace and the anointing on my life or, or the sacrifice that I had to make to get. I'm not going to stoop down. Can somebody just say, I'm not going to settle. I'm not going to settle because other people are uncomfortable. Come on. That, oh, that's a whole nother word in itself. I'm going to help somebody tonight. One of y'all, 15, 20, 30 people, I'm going to help you tonight. And some of y'all getting in here and leaving out. This is the word that's going to change your life. I'm not going to settle. I'm putting it in the chat myself because that's a word for my own self. I'm not going to settle for somebody else that's uncomfortable. No, 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 no. Come on, help me testify here. I see y'all commenting. I see y'all commenting. Testify. I'm not going to settle. Because of somebody else's discomfort. Mm -mm. Um, no, no, ma'am. No, sir. You better keep on being blessed. What did Mary Mary uh, say? Uh, keep walking. I'm walking. I'm walking. I'm going to keep on walking in my blessing. Amen. I, uh, when I was in the world, I used to walk it out uh, in these clubs, being uh, uh, fully um, engulfed by the spirits that was in those cups. Come on. But now that I'm in the spirit of the Lord, I'm going to walk it out like a madman. I'm talking about crazy. I'm going to walk it out like I'm crazy blessed. And even if I don't have it yet, I'm walking in advance. That's why you can't stop walking right now because there's an advance blessing. If you stop now, grace won't get you to the advance that is to come. Come on, somebody. Let me slow down so I can read y'all comments because y'all, 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 y'all talking good tonight and I can't even read it. <laughs> Amen. Uh, it's who laughing at me, somebody laughing at me, but I'm telling you, I'm going to keep on walking it out. Amen. Uh, I'm not going to settle because of somebody else's, uh, uh, discomfort. No, ma'am. No, sir. Um, no, ma'am. No, sir. No, 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 no. I'm trying to multitask y'all pray for me. <laughs> somebody else's. I'm trying to get this out there. Discomfort. Amen. There you go. Pastor Corey, get some fingers to work. They're anointed too. All right. All right. So listen, listen, listen. Let me see what y'all saying tonight. Sister Tawana, God bless you. Ooh, the Lord know he ministered a word to you on Sunday that wrecked the house. Girl, you, I know you, I know you full this week and the, the enemy mad. And I'm we yet praying for you, woman of God. He is mad, but he, he spoke something specific to you. That was so powerful. I was just so proud to see what God is getting ready to do over your life. Um, God bless you, woman. Welcome to Bible study. I know you just getting off. Amen. Always interactive with us. God bless you, woman of God. Amen. Sister Jean said, no settling. Uh, Jen, uh, uh, our sister Jen said, no settling. No, nope, no, nope, we're not going to settle. Sister Tawana said, I'm not going to settle. Not going to do it. I love it, y'all. Come on. Talk to me. Talk to me. Talk to me. Talk to me. Pastor, Pastor Sierra said, walk it out. Walk out in your favor then. That's, that's what we're going to do, honey. The single tears, we're going to walk out in our favor. Uh, sister Katani said, I'm not going to settle. Yes, I love it. I love it. Nope. If it makes them uncomfortable, oh, well, let them deal with it. Love will deal with it after a while. Love will deal with it after a while. Sister Tawana put the, the emojis in there. My God, woman of God, she put the emojis in there. This, I'm walking. You hear me? I'm going to walk. Amen. Amen. I'm walking away, Sister Katani said. That's right. So this to answer your question, Pastor Sierra, and hopefully this did answer the question that you put through there for the people. Uh, yeah, if they're uncomfortable, let them know. The blessings of the Lord makes rich and adds no sorrow. So if they're jealous, they're only jealous because of the blessings that they were met with on my life. Every time I'm blessed, every time I'm lifted up, every time God works it out, some jealous person gets mad. Call them what it is. They, yeah, they jealous. They don't understand. They're still fighting and bickering with stuff that uh, 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 they can't deal with, but they yet want us to deal with their misery. No, sir. No, sir. No, sir. Listen, do not be deceived. Bad company 
company ruins good morals. That's that's First Corinthians, I believe, fifteen and thirty three. Hopefully, uh, uh, don't quote me on that. Somebody look it up real quick before I, I, I say that for sure. I believe that's the that's the verse. Uh, but I, I I'm not going to walk with people that are jealous because bad company ruins good habits, good uh, good morals. Amen. And so I'm not going to walk it out with them. No, I'm not going to walk it out with them. Let's see if that was it. I think that was it. Oh, God bless you. First Corinthians 15 to 33. Somebody put that in the chat. Good company, uh, bad company ruins good morals. That's the word of the Lord for you. So keep on walking. Don't settle. Don't, once, you, once you settle, excuse me, once you settle, you start to um, become like those people that you're settling in with. To settle, I'm, I'm, I'm doing all this on the fly, y'all. I'm just being led by God because y'all putting it in the chat. Amen. Um, to settle. Once you start settling with, with people, once you have surpassed a certain level, you start to come back to settle in with those that you have surpassed. Not that this is a competition, not that anything, but you have received grace to go to a new level. If you go backwards to settle in, what you're doing is you're reaching an agreement with someone uh, that you're not on that level with. Ooh, And I'm telling you, some of us are doing that in relationship, uh, work, uh, 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 friendships, um, uh, business deals. You can't do it. You can't do it. You got to be. Uh, more accountable to your life and you can't just show up in anything and you can't just be in anything. Amen. Because you have grace to win. You can't just show up in anything and you just can't be in anything. I'll say it again. Because you have grace to win, you cannot just show up in anything and you cannot just be in anything. Amen. 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 Is this helping anybody tonight? Amen. Amen. First Corinthians 15, 33. God bless you. Thank you, sister. Uh, 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 I'm sorry, Pastor Sierra. I'm looking at everybody's name. Pastor Sierra, thank you, honey, for uh, putting that in there. Somebody needs that. Amen. So here, let's talk about this. The interesting thing about God's grace is that it's not uh, just a word. We normally use grace and we understand it as a word, but I want to tell you tonight that grace is God. In order for grace to work, it has to be God. In order for grace to work, it has to be God. In order for grace to work, it has to be God. There's no other way that we can receive grace and have grace without God. I know I'm saying a lot, but stay with me, people of God. There's no other way that we can have grace and receive grace without God. Let's go here. Let's go here to uh, uh, Ephesians 2, 8 through 9. Ephesians 2, 8 through 9. It says, for it is by grace you have been saved through faith, and it is not from yourselves. It is the gift of God. Grace comes from a place of God. It comes from within himself. It is himself. I'll say it again. Grace comes from within himself because it is himself. Grace is not a third-party event. Grace is 100 and more percent all God. Amen. Uh, not by works so that no one can boast. No one can boast of this because this is who God is. I have another scripture for you, but we're going to walk through it slowly. We're going to walk through it slowly. Amen. Um, so understand this, that uh, grace is all 100 percent and more. It is God. It is a word that describes God. Because God is grace. God is grace. Just like God is love, God is grace. Somebody say amen. Um, Pastor Sierra says, stop reaching in agreements that you're on the, I'm sorry, she says, stop reaching in agreements that you're on the same level with. Don't lose your grace for winning. Amen. I, I understand what you're saying. Yes, yeah, stop reaching for agreements um, that you're, yeah, that you're not on the same level with. Amen. Don't, don't lose your grace for winning. Amen. Uh, in order, uh, in order for grace to work, it has to be God. Yes, 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 yes. Sister Jen, in order for it to work, it has to be God. Amen. Okay. She put it back in there. I understood it when I read it the second time, Pastor Sierra. Thank you. That's very important. Stop reaching in agreements with others who are not on the same level as you. Don't lose your grace for winning. Don't lose your grace. And a lot of us lose our grace for temporary measures. That is so true. Have you ever been so blessed and then and then kind of missed out on more of your blessing and more of the place that you were going because you kind of went backwards to kind of please somebody else or to make them feel like they were included? Let me tell you, your grace. Let's 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 switch this camera real quick so I can say something powerful to y'all. Let me say this to you. 
to you right now that is watching who haven't said nothing. You're just you're just tuning in. You're just chiming in. And it's beautiful. I love this. But I need to say something straight to you tonight. You are so blessed by grace that you really want to make people feel included. But I want to tell you something that there are some people. Yes, they're in your family. Yes, you're dating them. Yes, you're, they're in your friendships and all of that and so on. And that's all beautiful and well. But you are so blessed by grace right now in your life. I don't know who I'm talking to, but you are so blessed by grace right now in your life that God is not going to allow some of these people that you want to come with you. He's not going to allow them to go with you. You're going to have to walk through this valley, through the shadow of death with grace and know that God is with you and not your friend and not your homegirl and not your uh, uh, significant other. They can't go through this valley with you. I'll say this to you straightforward. There are some valleys that people are not going to be able to go through with you and you have to be okay with that or lose your grace. One of the two. You have to be okay with it because if you're if you want to take a gang of people with you through this valley, you're going to be highly upset when you don't make it out. But I'm telling you, the Lord God is there. He is our shepherd. We shall not want no other man, no other woman, no other friendship, no other persons can go through this with us like God. Mother Neil, I'll say it like 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 you said earlier. Can't nobody do you like Jesus. So you're going to have to be okay with going with Jesus until Jesus takes you to a place where people can be. What? <laughs> Let me get back over here. Oh, Jesus. Mm, Y'all going to mess me up tonight. You got to be okay with going through with Jesus until Jesus gets you to a place where others can now come. Did I say something tonight? Okay, maybe, 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 maybe you ain't the one that need that message. Okay, I'm gonna come back to you because you you just wrote that down. You just you just you you just figured out what I just said. You're gonna have to be okay with going through this valley place with Jesus, with God only, with grace, with mercy, with favor. You're gonna have to let some hands go. You're gonna have to uh, stop texting some folks, stop calling some folks, stop receiving some texts, stop receiving some calls. And there's no hard feelings. It's all love. But I'm in a place, I'm in a valley, and I can't see that clear. But the only one, the only one that can get me through this, not get me out of it, but get me through this is the Lord God. And I know that my friends have gotten me through and walked with me through some things, but there's some things that they are not qualified and they'll have the grace on their lives to walk with me but the grace on my life the God that's in me is going to get me through this place and this storm this issue and this stress he's going to get me through it and I'm going to be just fine because I have grace I have God to win I have this already so I know you're used to me hitting you up when it's time to go and it's time to fight but this fight you're not graced for it oh Okay, while you work that out with your friends, let me come back over here to these folks who didn't want to say nothing earlier when I was trying to tell you you're going to have to be okay until Jesus makes space for those people to come. How many of you know that God will separate some people from us intentionally so we can finally understand the grace on our life? Oh, my God. I'm talking about preaching to night. Ooh, we let me see what y'all saying, because I just talked to I don't know who's on what crowd. I don't know what what platform y'all on tonight, but we going to talk about this thing. So I, I, I'm telling you, I'm speaking this because I have to testify of my own life. You have to be OK with some people not going with you. Yeah, you have to be OK until Jesus allows them permission, opens the gate for them to enter in. You're going to go into a place of sanctification, which means to separate from. You're going to have to separate yourself from and to make yourself holy, which is your reasonable due service. Come on, Romans 12 and 1. And you're going to have to be okay with the separation. If you're not okay with the separation, you're going to mishandle your grace and you won't win the race let me talk back to them because I know y'all dealing with something right now. The race was not given to the swift, not the fastest person, not the quickest person. The race was not given to the strong, not the meatiest person, not the biggest person, not the broad, the broad, uh, broadest person. The, the, it, it was not given to those people. It was given to those who are going to endure. And let me tell you about people that endure. They have grace to endure. They have grace 
to win. If you've ever seen a marathon runner, my God, do they have grace on their body and their bones and their mentality. They have grace because they're pushing their body to a limit and to a level beyond the body's capacity to handle. And the only reason why they're able to push past that threshold is because they have grace to do it and they have grace to win. And although it is painful, man and woman of God, I understand that you are hurting, but God has put grace on you. He told Paul, I understand that you ain't seeing clearly right now, hearing right right now uh, um, feeling right now the way that you normally would because of this thing that's in, intruding in your life and it's, it's in your side it's a it's a weight it's uncomfortable and it's not fun it's not pleasant to do the things you normally would do with this thing hindering in your life but you think it's a hindrance but I'm telling you my grace is sufficient I, I, I gotta go back I gotta go back over here so y'all can let that settle in God bless you but God bless you. Let me get let me get let me get back into these comments and see where y'all at right now. Ooh, somebody help me preach this word tonight. I'm getting ready to get off of here in a little bit. Y'all better stay with me while you can. Amen. Tag a friend, tag an enemy, tag a family member, and let them get in this word tonight because this is powerful. This is powerful. How you think you're going to get through the next four years of this election without grace? How you think you're going to get through the next four years of school without grace? How you think you're going to get through the first year of your marriage without grace? How do you, come on, you need grace. You need it. You can't get grace without God. This is why we need you in the house of the Lord. I'll make that plea to you in just a moment. Uh, and so Pastor Sierra says some fights are not uh, grace for some people. She reiterating this word. Lord, I'm about to throw this shoe. <laughs> Oh, God, she said, I'm about to throw this shoe at me. Please, baby, don't throw this shoe at me. I felt a quickening in my spirit, she says. Uh, uh, Mother Robinson said, teach. Thank you, Mom. Amen. Sister Tawana says, I was just saying I'm about to throw my phone. <laughs> y'all acted up. Oh, my God, y'all acted up. I have always wanted others to go with me, and it just isn't possible. Sister Amy, that's the realization of um, some, of the, some of the lifestyle, uh, the, some of the points of our lifestyle in our Christian journey. We have to be okay with knowing that they're not going to go with us. Let me tell you, Sister Amy, what the Lord told his disciples. He said, in a little while, you're, going to see, uh, you're not going to see me, but yet in a little while, you'll see me again. I'm paraphrasing. He told them this about the resurrection. He was telling them about this, but he had to tell, them, tell it to them on their level. He's like, look, I'm going to a place, and if I don't go, uh, uh, you sh there won't be no way for you to come in. I'm paraphrasing, but he basically told them, I'm going to a place, and I'm going to go prepare room for you. And when I come back, you'll see me again. But then in a little while after that, I'll be gone again. But I'll receive you when it's time. And I want to tell you, if Jesus was okay with leaving to go prepare for us, why aren't you okay to leave to prepare for your own self? Come on. And so we can't be meddling around with people that's not ready. Come on, somebody. I, I don't want to get on a tangent. Oh, my God. Okay, Pastor Sierra, yep. Uh, Pastor uh, Sierra saying, uh, I'm telling you, my God. Uh, um, Sister Tawana says, I can't take this Bible study tonight. Why y'all acting up? Uh, yes, you can. Yes, you can. If you could take what happened on Sunday, woman of God, because I'm telling you, I, the Lord, I, I, man, that thing, I was praying for you, woman of God, even even after the service. You, you, you are on the Lord's heart right now. I'm telling you. You are on the Lord's heart. So I, I know I didn't get into this stuff on Sunday because that's not the Lord is leading me there tonight. But we have mishandled our grace for others. Oh, my God. we have mishandled our grace for others. Think about your previous 10 years. Think about it. Mm. Man, my coffee done got cold. Oh, my God. I need to warm it up. Oh, Jesus. I would tell my wife to come grab this cup, but it's cool. It's cool. She probably losing her mind right now at me. What in what has gotten into this man? The Lord, the grace. So listen, it is 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 God's grace that's going to uh help us to understand that it's him that's going to take us through, not others that's going to walk with us. And I, I I'm okay. Listen, be okay with this. Say this to yourself. Write this in the comment section. Please write this in the comment section. Because I have grace, this is going to be so powerful. Come on, get your fingers ready. Come on, type this in. 
y'all, y'all, y'all missing y'all point right now. <laughs> Come on, congregation, get ready. Because I have grace, I'm okay with this valley. Can you write that? Because I have grace, I'm okay with this valley. Amen. Come on, come on. Let me let me give y'all something. Let me give y'all some worship music so y'all can calm down. <laughs> y'all about to lose it. Because I have grace, I'm okay with this valley. Amen. Because I have grace, and you really mean you have God, but I'm okay with this this valley. Amen. I, oh, don't let the music fool you. I'm not ending. I'm just giving y'all some time to cool down because I know this is a lot for me too. Uh, I'm okay with this valley. Yes. Thank you, Sister Whitney. You beat me to it. I'm trying to multitask at the same time. Um, because I have grace, I'm okay with this valley. That That's your testimony right there. That's your testimony right there. That's your testimony right there. Because I have grace, I'm okay with this valley. What? Pastor Carr? Yeah. Because I have God, I'm okay with this valley. Think about the many people that have been in valley situations. David, Moses, Abraham, Peter, Paul, uh, Jonah. All these people were in dark like places. Uh, 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 Isaiah, before he was Isaiah, he was Jacob. Think about this. These people had to endure some hard, oh, some hard stuff. And it was only by the grace of, it was only by the grace of God that they were able to come through. Amen. Can y'all understand what is going on tonight? You, you, you are making it through because of grace. You're winning right now because of grace. You're alive right now because of grace. There's no other way. Look at this scripture. It says, for it is by grace. Do you see what Ephesians, what Paul is telling us here? He says, for it is by grace grace that you have been saved let's just remove one word not changing the scripture for it is let's substitute let's say not i want to say remove let's add a word in here real quickly okay for it is by grace that you are alive that you have life that you have opportunity is by grace that you have strength is by grace that you didn't uh, uh, lose it is by grace that you didn't settle it is by grace that you heard the words of God before you entered into something it is by grace yes so don't lose your grace trying to make other people comfortable trying to bring other people with you because they might die in the valley because you were so willing to bring you bring them in I'm not going to sacrifice another friend for the journey that God has put me on. That's another word in itself. Let me let me let that settle with y'all while I come over here. I'm not going to lose another friend because they're trying to live vicariously through my grace. I'm not. I'm not going to allow people to live vicariously through my grace. Do you hear what I'm saying? There's people that's trying to live vicariously through your grace. Don't let them because it's going to kill them. You're going to lose them. They're going to uh, be an enemy to you because they're trying to live vicariously through your grace. What are you saying, Pastor Corey? There's people that are trying to live on the grace that you have within you, but they don't have the capacity to in, uh, to uh, to have the grace that you have within you. There are some people, I'm not graced with the ministry of the Potter's House in Dallas, Texas. That's not the grace I'm, uh, that's not the grace that's on my life right now. That's the grace that's on T.D. Jakes and God bless him. Am I jealous of the uh, church he has? Absolutely. Am I inspired of the church he has? Yes. But can I go through the valley to get to the church he has? Probably not because I'm not graced for that journey. My journey is specific and we need to stop modeling ourselves after these foolish celebrities trying to get what they have trying to be who they are because you're inspired by the blessings that you see the material things that you see and the enemy is a the devil is able to bless them with some stuff too but you're trying to acquire the thing not understanding how they got to it i'm not going to lose myself and sell my soul to profit the world it it, it gains me nothing to lose myself and lose my soul for the world. And so I'm going to stay in this valley because I have grace. Because I have grace, I'm okay with this valley. If it causes me to be evicted, I know that God is with me. And I know that sounds crazy because many of us have gone through some hard stuff on the grace of God, but you made it through. Amen. And that's why you're on here tonight. Amen. Amen. 
Amen. Let me see what we're saying tonight. Sister April, my sister April, she said, for most of my life, I struggled with wanting to live and always wondered why I won't just die already. Because grace is on you, woman of God. She said, but for the past week or two, I've been learning about God's grace and serving our Lord. That's beautiful. Come on, somebody. Yes, that's what I'm talking about. So thank you for reminding me again. Thank God. Thank God. Thank God. Thank God. Thank God. Did y'all see that testimony she just wrote? That is powerful. Man, I love that. That's why we're here. That's why we're doing what we're doing. That's why we're doing what we're doing, because we want people to know that it is by the grace of God that 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 you are not uh, in the grave not that you didn't, he didn't allow you to uh, bring on the things that you wanted to bring upon yourself, the pain, the suffering. He didn't allow it because of his grace, because of his grace. I got a scripture. I need to get to you all real quickly. I got to get to the scripture real quickly. And, um, uh, I think I've gone over the things that I need to go over because the Lord has led me those in those areas. So I'm just kind of trying to recap a few things, but let me get to this scripture. That's very powerful, uh, tonight. Um, that you all really need to see. Oh man. Okay. Here it is. All right. So it is. Yeah. Okay. It is this right here. John 1, 14, 16, and 17. We're going to read that and we're going to kind of close out tonight because I think this has been a very powerful night in the Lord. And I really want you to let this stuff sit with you uh, as it is sitting with me. um, Even the more um, I'm definitely the first partaker in this word. Okay. Oh, wow. Okay. Pastor Sierra says, wow. When we try to bring them in the valley, they'll die. They weren't ordained for this valley. They don't have the capacity. That's right. And many of us know, Pastor Sierra, you know, I know, and some other people, we know that some of our friends have tried to enter in the valley and we invited them in. And, and guess what? They, some of these people are dying in that place. They had to evacuate. They had to evacuate because they don't have the capacity for the grace that's on our life. They need to stay in their lane and we need to stay in ours. And when God brings us together, I said, when God brings us together, it'll be fine. But until then, don't force people into your valley because you need company. Like I told you, bad company ruins good morals that company may be a good person but it may be bad in the company altogether let's go to this scripture here it says uh john 1 and 14 in the niv it says the word became flesh and made his dwelling among us we have seen his glory the glory of the one and only son who became the father full of grace and truth God is grace. His son, Jesus, is grace. The reason we have grace is because we have Jesus. The reason we have Jesus is because we have the Father. The reason why we have the Father is because we have the Holy Spirit. They're all one together, and we need them all together to live. This is what we're talking about tonight. Uh, uh, The grace that is on our lives is here because of Jesus Christ. And I know, I know, I know, I know, I know that the the, the world doesn't like to use his name. It's not his word. I I heard one of uh, somebody says uh, uh, the word Jesus. No, Jesus is not the word uh, uh, like a word. Jesus is a name. He's a he's a person, Uh, uh, not a, you know, not a person. Y'all understand what I'm saying? Lord have mercy because. Don't come for me tonight, okay? But Jesus is a being. He is the son of God. Let's say it that way. There it is. He's the son of God. Sorry, I'm excited. He is the son of God. And so he is the son of God who is full of grace and truth, who came from the father, it says, full of grace and truth. Next scripture says, out of his fullness, we have received grace in place of grace already given. You know how powerful this is right here. Out of God's fullness, out of his son's fullness, we have received grace in place of grace already given. So grace is not a thing that's given one time. Grace is multiplying itself in our lives. The more grace, the better the life. My God, today, the more God, the better the life. The more Jesus, the better the life. So the more grace, the better life I have. The more grace, the better life life I have. So out of his fullness, we have all received grace in a place, grace already given. And lastly, it says, uh, for the law was given through Moses, grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. So again, in order for grace to work, we have to have God. It has to be God. And I want to tell you this. One of the things we talked about on Sunday is that we're looking for grace from people 
that don't even have it within themselves to give. And so we stay stuck in relationships. We start making relationships. We start going to different groups and, and, and encouraging different things because we're looking for something we don't really understand. We're asking for a lot of stuff from people and what we don't understand we're looking for from them is grace, but we'll never get it and we'll be ignorant to it for a long time until we lock in with God, until I, I, until I wrestle within myself that I'm not going to get it from no other source but God, then I'll understand where to get it from. One of my examples was I use my wife is we can't pray for stuff and then go the opposite way of the things that we're praying for. You're asking God, oh, God, bless me with this. Bless me with this. I want this. I want that. And then you go chase for things that doesn't align with what you pray to God about. You're not going to get grace from things that do not align with God. Again, God is grace. To receive grace from other sources and other places where God is, it needs to align with God. Now, everybody is created by God, but everybody is not aligned with God. Therefore, you cannot get grace from people that are not aligned with God. Now, God can move on somebody. God can move on somebody to bless you. God will move on somebody to bless you that is not according to uh, his will, that don't live by his, his will. Yes, he'll use people to do that for you. Uh, however, it doesn't mean they're going to give you grace because it's in them. God may be using them. God may have prompted them. But there's some people that we're trying to pull grace out of. We're trying to hope that they give us grace in a moment. It's not in them to give. And that's why we end up messed up over people, over systems, over groups and over parties. Look at look at the political race today. People are messed up. People are literally worshiping people like the the. I'll say this, the adultery that I see that is made toward uh, President Trump is alarming to me. It's alarming to me because people have really sold out themselves and sold out their image and sold out their faith somehow for the glorification of a man. And it's not that it's not happening for the other. I'm not saying it's not, but you can plainly see how enamored people have become with a man, a man, just a man, a mere mortal. And, and, and it's very alarming, uh, the rate that we are uh, seeing these things. And regardless of who you believe who's going to win and who's going to take power, that's not what I'm after. I'm not after that. I'm after the fact that we cannot lose our grace trusting people who cannot get us to a new level or will uh, have compassion on us as we go to that next level. I'm not going to lose my grace. I'm not even going to lose no sleep over that stuff. Amen. Ooh, Jesus. All right, let me get to the, some comments real quick because um, I'm getting ready to log off here in just a moment. But if this has helped you, come on, somebody say what you got to say in the comment section. Let me know. Amen. I see a lot of hallelujahs. Amens. Um, I'm probably reading these a little bit late, so I'm not sure what y'all responded to. But God bless you. Anyhow, anyhow, anyhow. anyhow. Um, all right. Good, good, good. Let me know if you got questions, if you have comments. Um, sister Charlene, God bless you for joining in with us tonight. God bless you, our sister. We love you so much. All the way uh, from the DMV area, our sister. God bless you. Amen. She said, she said, you touching something deep, uh, Pastor. Yeah, the Lord, the Lord did. He led me down this way. None of this stuff isn't even in my notes. So I don't even know how I even tripped down this, <laughs> this avenue. It was all by him. Amen. Pastor Sierra says, yes, we look for grace in others. But they do not have it. I'm learning to understand this fully because I found that it will frustrate you. Yes, it will. Trying to get others to understand grace, but they don't embody it. Um, they don't embody it to understand grace. Yeah. Pa uh, Sister Tawana said, beautiful. You absolutely um, been reminded. Remain. Uh, remind yourself daily. Yeah. 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 Oh, OK. Yeah. I love that. She's responding to our sister April. Uh, thank you. That's such beautiful. And see, here at the altar, we encourage people. Hey, Amen. That's good. That's good. All right, people of God, people of God, I'm getting ready to get off of here. You have uh, enough grace even now to win forever. Uh, God is getting ready to shift the momentum in your favor. Uh, Sister Tawana, hopefully you don't mind me sharing the word of God that was released on your life on Sunday because it was really a message for the house. But God has graced us so much that he's about to turn uh, that word pending into process. He's about to move us from pending to process. That thing wrecked me so bad on Sunday. Y'all have no idea that thing wrecked me so bad on Sunday. 
moving from pending to process. How many of you are waiting for something that is pending, that says pending? Literally, it is pending. It's not moving backwards nor forward. It is in limbo. But God is about to move so heavily on your life. If you're under the sound of my voice, I don't know what you're seeking. I don't know what you've applied for. I don't know what you've checked on. I don't know what you're waiting for. But trust the word of the Lord tonight that he's about to move you from pending to process. Why? Because you have grace to win. You have grace to win. Amen. Amen. I'm going to, I'm going to allow you all to settle in the word real quickly. I'm going to give you this opportunity to give. Uh, we have two ways to give here at Alta Worship Center online. And you can give by Cash App or you can give by PayPal. The information is here before you on your screen. Amen. 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 Oh, thank you. Thank you, Sister Tawana. She says, share it. Yeah, that, that was a that was a word. That was a word for the house for sure. Amen. That was a word for the house for sure. I'm going to put the ways to give down here below. So, people of God, if you um, if you want to give by Cash App, Cash App's right here. Oh, nope. That's PayPal. Cash App's right here. I try to be slick, y'all. Try to be creative. Cash App's right here. PayPal's right here. If you want to do it by PayPal, just click the link on the description of this video. It'll send you right to our PayPal or unless you have the cash app, um, go ahead. And we sold on this word on Sunday. Something special is happening in the house. Um, we we sold on this word. So if you received anything tonight that is significant to changing your life, go ahead and sow uh, into the ministry of Altar Worship Center. There are people sowing um, into the hundreds, into the thousands, into this ministry because they believe in the work this ministry is doing, in the word that this ministry is ministering to God's people, in the lives that are being changed. Every life changes at the altar. Come on, there's no place like Altar Worship Center. And there's no place like the altar. So if you want to be a part of that, go ahead and sow. Listen, person uh, who's watching this, who's just settling in with this, you need a church home. You need to be somewhere grounded, man. These next these next four years, no matter who takes office, you need to find a place, not just for four years, but for a lifetime that's going to change your life. You're, you're trying to become something that you need a little bit more of a push in. You're trying to change a way that you need a little bit more of, of, of a tribe to show you that it's possible. And I want to invite you to the altar, altar worship center. We're here. We're here all the time. <clears throat> Excuse me. We're here all the time uh, online for our Bible studies. But on Sunday morning, somebody say on Sunday morning, you can meet us at the altar. You can meet us at the altar at 2806 North 22nd Street. Somebody put the address in the chat uh, for those who need a church home. If you need a church home, I want you to please, please make it up in your mind that you want to be somewhere. This is our invitation to you. Come join us. Be a part of this ministry. Become a partner of this ministry. Well, Pastor Corey, maybe uh, I, I want to do that, but I'm, I don't live in the local area of Tampa. That's fine. Come, reach out to us. We'll tell you how you can become a covenant partner with us. We have plenty of covenant partners already, and we would love for you if you're from a distance and you can't make it into this area. Maybe you're out of state. Yeah, the Lord will do that too. You can become a covenant partner of this ministry. This ministry is on the move, is on the rise, and God has graced us for you. And I believe if you're hearing this and you're watching this, this is directly for you. So go ahead. Yes, God bless you. 2806 North 22nd Street, Tampa, Florida, 33605. 33605. All right. If you need a church home, we have a space for you. We have plenty of room for you to come in and be changed. Everything changes at the altar. Everything. Come make that sacrifice. Come on, woman of God, man of God. I know you're on here. I know you're on here. We're looking for you, family. We've been praying for you. Where are you at? Don't hide no more. You've been getting on here. You've been watching these live streams. You've been watching these on replay. You've been coming back. You, know, you Sometimes you click and you wait till we come off of live. Oh, I know I'm talking to somebody. I know you're here. You're watching this on replay. You skipped around long enough. Come on, go ahead and make that decision and be a part. Somebody say, meet me at the altar. Come on, let them know. Meet me at at the altar. Come on, this is your home. This is where you need to be. You're worried about the election. You're worried about the monies. You're worried about the job. You're worried about your education, your kids, and all of that. Come on, I can encourage you. The woman of God, my wife, Pastor Sierra, and myself, and the people here at Altar Worship Center, we are a tribe on fire. Literally, we are a tribe 
on fire. Come on, everything, every life, every person, every heart, every mind, every soul, every child, every boy, every girl, everyone changes at the altar. And that's the only reason why we go. We go to the altar for change. So join us at Altar Worship Center. Um, Join us at Altar Worship Center. We would love to have you. Our church is open. Our church is open. Our church is open, and we would love to host you. We have people here on standby. My dear sister Tawana, she can uh, get in touch with you. If you would, if you want to be a part of Altar Worship Center, and I'm making this plea because we are in a time of transition, and I don't want you to transition into the wrong thing. You're already in the valley place right now, and you need the help to get through it. We have the word, we have the strategy, and we have everything you need to get through that valley. And I don't want you to go through it and not knowing how to get through it. Come on, there is light. There is light at the end of this for you. And we have what it takes. Come on. So please join us at Altar Worship Center. Um, the number the number that you would need to call is 813-559-08, or sorry, 0978. I'm gonna put that up real quick if y'all don't mind. Let me let me do this real quickly uh, while you're making that decision. Somebody's going to reach out and do this. I, I know it. I know the Lord is going to do this for us. The Lord is going to do this for us. So go ahead. I'm going to put this up on the screen in just a moment. Give me about 10 seconds to put this up. Go ahead and, and make that decision or find somebody who you know who uh, needs to make that uh, make that plea and uh, make that decision with God. Go ahead and do that for me. So let me get back here. Here we go. There we go. All right. Now it's official. You call this number or you can even text this number. You don't have to call. You can text it, too, if you want to be a little bit more um, um, in that way. Uh, do it. That's fine. It, either way, get in contact with us. Um, please get in contact with us. And we want you to be a part of this ministry. This ministry needs you and you need this ministry. And we have a place for you and we know what to do. So please, yeah, there you go. Call or text us. Call or text us. Call or text us. Amen. 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 Call or text us. Call or text us. Amen. 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 I want to make sure I didn't miss anything. I want to make sure I didn't miss anything. Amen. Amen. All right. Did I miss something? I'm looking at something. I, I feel like I missed it. Hold on. Wait a minute. Help me out. Where is that? All right. I, hopefully I didn't miss anything. Pastor Sierra, please make sure I didn't miss nothing. Um, okay. Make sure I didn't miss nothing, y'all. I'm trying not to get lost in these comments. Y'all said a lot tonight. Okay. Okay. All right. I think I think I got it. I think I got it. Okay. Looks like Pastor Sierra and Sister Tawana are working on something. I can't follow. All right. So y'all forgive me. <laughs> I can't follow it. But uh, let me give you this real quick. Save the date um, for December 29th through the 31st. We're having our end of, the, or excuse me, our New Year's revival. It is Revive All. Revive All in 2021. We're going into 2021 and we all need to be revived. So this is Revive All. So save the dates. We're going to get you more information and just do time. But December 29th through the 31st. December 29th through the 31st, I want you to make time to come and be with us at Altar Worship Center. That is 2806 North 22nd Street, and uh, we would love for you to, um, to come. All right. If all hearts and minds are clear, God bless you to each and every person that is on here. Um, prayerfully, you've made up in your mind uh, what it is that you need to do and what it is that you will do, and we truly appreciate you. Oh, let me do this real quickly uh, before I get off. I'm trying to help and get everything out the way. Um, my wife would kill me if I don't get all these announcements out. All right. 
um, this Saturday, we didn't say this on Sunday, but this Saturday I'll be ministering in word at the Center for Manifestation on uh, Saturday night. It is called Liberation. Uh, Nuck if you buck. How many of y'all remember that back from the early 2000s? All right. Uh, the theme is fight for your life. And look how God aligned that when they reached out. It just happened to align with our next series identically. So God is getting ready to do something. So if y'all would meet me on Saturday, uh, come be um, a part of this this great event. Um, the information is on your screen. Screenshot it. Take a shot of it. We've posted it on our page and I've posted it on mine as well. You can grab that information directly. But that is Saturday night at 7 p.m. We would love for you to be there. Uh, grab that information and uh, come on. And then also on November the 15th, which is the following Sunday, they are celebrating um, your boy's birthday. I normally don't do my own um um, flyers and stuff. I don't normally say my own stuff. Normally, I let somebody else do this because I don't want to feel, uh, you know, arrogant for saying something about my own birthday celebration, but it is what it is. I'm on here tonight and I got to do it. So, y'all, grab this information, put it in your calendars. We want to see you. I want to see some new faces at the altar on Sunday and uh, y'all come on through. All right, I'm getting ready to wrap up. I'm getting ready to wrap up. And I really appreciate all of you that were on here tonight, all of you that made this night great. And um, prayerfully, you have been blessed by the word of the Lord tonight. And say it one more time, I have grace to win. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for this time of word and fellowship and with your people. Truly, you have blessed us, God. Truly, you have graced us. And we are not concerned. We're not worried with what's getting ready to happen around us because you have it all in control. And so because of that, Father, we are focused on you and every move that you are to make and every move that you are bringing us into. And so to our sister and to our brother that is on this live stream right now, know that you have grace to win because God himself has graced you to win. You will not lose. The word says you will live and you will not die. The word says now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and present you faultless. You know why? Because it is God's grace and he is full of it, full of grace, full of truth. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow you all the days of your life. Come on, Psalm 100. That is the prayer over our life. We have been graced because grace and mercy follows us all the days of our lives. So because of that, God, we say thank you. Thank you, Lord, for gracing us for love, gracing us for mercy, gracing us for our future and our destiny. And it's because of you we live and have our being. And God, we pray right now that we have reached the soul tonight, one that will be becoming a part of this ministry and being founded and being rooted in this word with the altar applied in their life in the tribe of people that is already on fire. And God, we pray that we reach some soul tonight that is choosing to give their life to Christ and all that they have belong to you, God. We give it back to you. I am because of the grace of God. And we love you, Father, for what you're doing. And we love you, God, for what you've already done. Bless the heart and the mind of your people. Let them not be in panic. And God, even in this transition of power that we're undergoing, protect our land, protect our cities, protect our people. Let no hurt, harm, or danger come upon the people under the sound of my voice and those that are connected to these people and those of those that we don't know. Bless them, Father. Let nothing come upon us, God. Let us come together. Unite us as we have called ourselves the United States. Let us find the way to be united in you. And because of your grace and your love to do it, we know it will be done. And in, in anything, God, you are always there. And so we pray right now for these candidates, for these parties, and for these people, God, that they be led by you, that you are able to speak to them and they are able to hear you. And Father, we just trust your word and trust you at what you're going to do. No matter what happens over these next couple weeks and next few, four years, we know that you're in charge and we know that you're in control. We may not like what we see. We may not like what we hear. But Lord, we trust in your word. We trust in your word. And so we give it over to you. We're no longer stressed. We're not bothered. We're not angry. We have grace. And for that, we will win. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you, people of God. It is time to sign off. You all be safe, be watchful, be prayerful, and continue to live a graceful life. In Jesus' name, amen. I love you all.